Hi, Richard Knudsen here again, and welcome back to another edition of the Dynamic CRM Trick Bag. And in this demonstration, I want to talk about workflows in CRM4. And in particular, I want to talk about a special kind of workflow, setting properties for so-called on-demand workflows, that is, workflows that run when a user explicitly requests to run them, as opposed to automatic workflow. I talked about those in a in a previous demonstration and in order to understand the difference it's going to be helpful to look at the security model a little bit. So what I'm going to do is while I'm signed on as the system administrator role that I'm in here, I'll navigate to settings, administration, and look at security roles and I'm going to use a custom security role I've created this probation salesperson security role and I'll look at the core records tab and if you haven't seen security roles before I'll give you a quick executive summary. What security roles in CRM are all about is a combination of what's known as privileges create, read, write, delete, the things you can do to records combined with so-called access levels, which are characterized by the degree to which these uh, colorful circle, circles are filled in, for specific entities. So for example, in this scenario here, if I'm a user that signed on as this security role, and I go to the read privilege for the account entity, and I see this full green circle, that means I've got organization privileges. So basically, this person would be able to see every account in the organization, say in an advanced find or on the grid. On the other hand, the right privilege you can see here is defined more restrictively for the account entity because I've only got user level privileges on access level for the right privilege. So that means I can only update accounts for which I am the owner. That's the way the security model would work for these typical entities such as account, contact, lead, and opportunities that a lot of users are familiar with, but it's a little less familiar for something like a workflow. This is more confusing, I think. A lot of people might not realize that a workflow is exposed in Dynamic CRM 4 as an entity. And if I go to the customization tab here, I see that this security role has read privilege at the organization level access organization access level on the workflow entity. So that means that this somebody that signed on as that security role is going to have the ability to run any on-demand workflow that's been created in the organization. To see this, let's go look at our workflows and let's look at this account territory update workflow that I've created as an example of this. I'll open that up, and it's published. I won't make any changes to it here, but I don't really need to. Notice that this workflow is exposed as an on-demand workflow. It's not going to be an automatic workflow. In the previous session I mentioned, I talked about automatic workflows, and I made the important point that automatic workflows always run in the security context of the workflow owner. It's different for on-demand workflows which run in the security context of the person who's executing the workflow. So if I'm the system administrator and I author one of these on-demand workflows, it'll always run if somebody can trigger it because it's running in my context as a system administrator. But this on-demand workflow, we're going to have some problems with this one. And to illustrate that, I'll go sign on as somebody who is in a different security role, so Mark Harrington here is in that probation salesperson security role. So if I look at active accounts, sure enough, this person can see all of the accounts in the organization. But if I open one up, such as Bike Universe, notice he can't make any changes to them because remember, he doesn't have write privileges to the accounts. He can only update accounts that he owns. So I'll close that out. But I'll observe here that if I select a number of account records, this person can run a workflow that's been exposed as an on-demand workflow because of that probably overly generous privilege that we've given him 
excuse me, the overly generous access level that we've given him on the read privilege for workflow. So if I run a workflow on the Bikomaniac store and open it up, sure enough, I see that Mark Harrington ran this workflow and it's there in a waiting state because I don't have permissions to update the count records, which is what this workflow does. So the workflow didn't work, which is probably appropriate because we don't want this person updating accounts. That's the whole purpose of him having the security role that he's in. But it's probably not such a great idea to expose workflows to people who can't run them. Notice there's no real visual cue here that the workflow broke. What if there was a dependence of some important process on that workflow having run, or at least on this person knowing whether or not it run, it, it ran successfully, we might have a problem here. So how do we fix that? We're going to go back and look at workflows again. And remember what we said was that since an on-demand workflow, I'll just pop this open one last time, on-demand workflows run in the security context of the user who's running them, what we then need to do is we have to fix that security role so that this probation salesperson security role really gives somebody the appropriate access level really what that they need to workflows. So for instance, I'm going to change the, for the read privilege, I'm going to change that access level to user rather than organization. And if I save this, close it, I'll lock those changes in, and then I'll go back to Mark Harrington's browser session. So here we are back as Mark Harrington again, and I'll just refresh the browser. I still have access to all the accounts that I need, and I still can't make changes to them, but notice now workflow is not exposed, and that's because we changed the access level from organization to a more appropriate user access level. So if Mark created a workflow, he'd be able to see workflows that he was the owner of or that had been shared out with him. That's the way user access level works. But now he's not tempted to run workflows that won't work for him, and that's probably a good thing. So this is a relatively complex topic, but it's one of those things that's important to master that if you really want to know how workflows work, because there's plenty of interesting things you can do with both on-demand and automatic workflows. And as you've seen in this demonstration, and if you watch the other one on automatic workflows, there are some important differences with respect to how they work. So Richard Knutson signing off, and I hope you found this helpful.